ஸ்ரீ குரு பியோ நமஹா வெல்கம் டு அவர் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்த் சாட்டர்டே ஆன்லைன் காஷ்மீர் கல்ச்சுரல் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் அவேர்னஸ் சீரீஸ் வி ஹேவ் வித் டுடே ஸ்ரீ கிரிதர் மமிடி த டாபிக் டுடே இஸ் ரிக்ளைமிங் இண்டு காஷ்மீர் லெட்ஸ் பிகின் வித் அவர் ப்ரேயர் சாங் டுடே பாய் ஸ்ரீமதி கிருஷ்ணவேணி she has been learning vocal carnatic music from her childhood she is well versed in rendering adi shankara's verses narayaniyam and several others in sanskrit she continues to learn carnatic vocal under parur dr harini srivatsa harini ah uh, sorry <laughs> krishna veni <laughs> shri guru bhyo namaha நமஸ்காரம் விஸ்வம் தர்ப்பண திருஷ்யமான நகரி துல்லியம் நிஜாந்தர்கதம் பசியன்னி மாயையா பகிரிவோத் பூத்தம் யதா நித்ரையா எத் சாட் புருதே பிரபோத சமயே ஸ்வாத்மானமேவாயம் தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீ குருமூர்த்தையே நமயிதம் Thank you, Veni. We look forward to seeing you again uh, next time. We thank Sri Kanchi Mutt for our ongoing series and offer our namaskarams to His Holiness Sri Shankara Vijayendra Sarasuddhi Swamidam. Kanji Mutt has always been in the forefront, modestly working with the sole aim of national integration, spiritual enlightenment, and preserving and promoting the uniqueness of Kashmir, as Kashmir is our cultural heritage. We are very pleased to welcome and introduce Sri Giridhar Mamidi. We thank him for his time today for our series. Giridhar Ji is a finance and tax professional. CFO in several multinationals in India and abroad most recently in one that we use so often which always brags one nation under google he is an us cfo there he is an advisory board member in sama lochana andhra pradesh state vp pragnya bharati telangana he is a panelist on several tv debates social political cultural religious economic and strategic affairs after seeing some of his presentations and also discussions i had with him i wonder why we can't include him as a military strategist i have requested giridhar ji to make a separate presentation on this topic later on an agenda bharat he has toured about 50 sites associated with mahabharat or vedic period this includes harappan sites in india extinct river saraswati and of course kashmir including militancy affected interiors sri mamidi's involvement reaffirms evolving spirit of belongingness spirit of identity as one nation and commitment to rediscover forgotten hindu past as his presentation can't be done in one slot we requested him to continue next week also finally if you google giridhar mamidi it shows 28800 results running to several pages just in case you haven't done over to you sir namaste to all of you and uh, thanks a lot for that uh, uh, you know introduction uh, ramesh ji uh, i am not too sure whether i am really um, you know that uh, great a personality to be introduced in such a elaborate manner um, i am just a foot soldier trying to do my little bit for the cause of sanatana dharma uh, especially um, you know touring um the borders of our country uh, kashmir especially and uh, it's my privilege uh, to uh, uh, share my experiences i am of course a non kashmiri pandit 
I don't belong to Kashmir. I am from the Telugu states. Uh, but then uh, the serial Chanakya, uh, which was, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sure all of you would have seen a few years back, uh, which was uh, produced by uh, Chandra Prakash Dvivedi ji. That had inspired me a lot. One dialogue in that, it said, from Himalayas to the seas, every inch is my motherland and nobody can stop me from, uh, you know, uh, respecting it. Uh, and so that is something which inspired me a lot. If that be the case, then every inch of Kashmir also should be my motherland and I should feel proud to go and reclaim it. That uh, motivated me to go to places in Kashmir. I'm sure uh, uh, my uh, previous sessions, a lot of sessions, uh, many speakers would have covered some temples of Kashmir. Uh, maybe some of them would be a repetition in my uh, presentation. But please bear with me. Uh, the idea is I'm not going into the history of it, what Kalhana wrote, what uh, was spoken in Nilmat Puran or, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, I am going to present to you like a Yatri, how a Yatri goes there and then reclaims, rediscovers the Hindu past of Kashmir, especially that which was uh, left behind, abandoned by our Kashmiri Pandit brothers. Uh, I try to retrace it and uh, like Ramesh ji in the introduction, uh, introductory remarks, remarks he said, I had the blessings of Mahakal to visit some of these places which are in highly militant infested areas. Um, some of them of course are protected by CRPF or uh, other paramilitary forces, Rashtra Rifles and others. But some of the mandirs are left abandoned, um, some uh, taken care by the locals. Some just abandoned. So I'm going to present uh, a canvas of uh, mandirs of Kashmir uh, to get you a glimpse of uh, what it is all about. A few slides to introduce Kashmir uh, from uh, my perspective, as I understand the people, the culture and things like that. Uh, very few uh, slides uh, as introduction. And then we go into uh, the mandirs of Kashmir. I will just start sharing. Um, I hope uh, you can see the slides. Ramesh ji, can you see that? We could see that. Yeah, thank you. So, um, uh, friends, uh, this is the most picturesque uh, Dal Lake during what they call as Chile Kalan. Chile Kalan is about a 40 day period of extreme cold winter uh, during uh, December and January. So, uh, you know, the beauty of Kashmir is something which is just undescribable. Uh, just a few uh, thoughts here. Uh, as we all know, uh, Kashmir Valley is a small part of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The problem is most of the narrative uh, is centered around the valley, all the politics and everything. But, uh, uh, you know, the state of Jammu and Kashmir is very vast. There is Jammu region. Uh, Jammu is a town, but there is a region of Jammu. In that, uh, Jammu is the biggest town. Then there is a Ladakh region, which of course is now a separate union territory. Then there are areas occupied by Pakistan. Uh, and so all put together is uh, the Jammu and Kashmir state. But the Kashmir Valley per se was filled with a lake called Satisar, uh, which drained through a place called Baramulla, which we, people call Baramulla today. Its original name is Varahamula. So it uh, it changed to Varahamula, became Brahmula, Brahmula, Baramulla. So that's what it is. So it shifted, uh, the, the water got drained out and a land, uh, a very fertile land emerged out of it. That is where Rishi Kashyap went, did his penance and uh, the land got, got his name, which is Kashmir. So uh, we all know this background. So uh, we look at the political map of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. During uh, Raja Hari Singh's time, this was a much, much larger state. I have circled this place called Chitral. 
Chitral is today completely lost to Pakistan and uh, Bharat doesn't even claim this. However, Raja of Jammu Kashmir, uh, Raja Hari Singh, uh, had suzerainty over Chitral as well. Chitral was an independent country. It was an independent kingdom, but it was loyal subject to the Darbar of uh, Srinagar or Jammu. So es essentially, when Raja Hari Singh handed over the state of Jammu and Kashmir to Bharat, uh, even his rights, obligations would have transferred to us. And the then government of Nehru should have claimed Chitral back. Unfortunately, that was not claimed. It has completely been lost out from our memory. Unfortunately, today Chitral is hotbed of terrorism from where a lot of terror training camps infiltered in, infiltrate into our part of the state. So anyway, this is the map of uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir as it exists. It should have existed in 1947. Unfortunately, uh, this is how it looks like now. The yellow part is what uh, is in our control and the green part is in the Pakistani control and the red part is in the Chinese control. You, you see there is a shade difference in green. There is a light shade to the left and the dark shade to the north. The light shade is what they call as Azad Jammu Kashmir, what we call as POJK. And then the dark shade is Gilgit Baltistan. There is a government uh, in uh, POJK, but there is no government in Gilgit Baltistan. It is directly administered from Islamabad. Um, then in 1963, a valley called Shagsgam Valley was handed over to China by Pakistan. So uh, right now, China holds almost 10% of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which uh, Raja Hari Singh had handed over to us. And uh, Pakistan holds about 30% and 60% of it is with us. This is just for a perspective. But then after Article 370 was diluted, a lot of people uh, wrongly use the term. It was abrogated. Uh, Article 370 still exists in our constitution. What uh, they did uh, on 5th of August 2019 was to remove its applicability to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. So let's call it dilution. Post dilution, the government of India released this map where the whole of Aksai Chin, uh, Shagsgam Valley, Gilgit Baltistan and Ladakh is a single union territory. And the regions of Jammu and Kashmir are union territory of Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir. So this is a perspective for us to start talking about where we uh, start from here. Uh, a quick a few points. Uh, the great Sanatanis that emerged out of this great uh, land include, of course, Abhinav Gupta. I'm sure a lot of uh, people have spoken about Abhinav Gupta. He was a great uh, philosopher, musician, poet, dramatist. He was a proponent of Kashmiri Shaivism. He wrote several books of that. Uh, I'm just quoting a few of them. Tantra Loka, Tantra Sara, Ishwara Pratyabhignya Vimarshini, uh, Abhinava Bharati. This is a commentary on Natya Shastra of Bharata Muni. Then uh, Bhairava Stava, uh, Bodha Pancha Dashi, uh, Dashika. So some, this is just a few of them. He has written several other books. One of the greatest uh, scholars, philosophers that this land has ever produced. Then of course the great Panini, the grammarian, who has given us the Ashtadhyayi and the Sanskrit grammar. Then Utpala Deva, he was a great Shiva Bhakta. Lalleshwari Devi, uh, Lal Ded, they call it locally. And Nandarishi. These are all some of the, uh, of course, there are a lot many. Just to give a perspective, I have uh, quoted a few of them. We all know that uh, Adi Shankara had visited uh, Kashmir. And uh, you see the top uh, part of the slide. You can see Adi Shankara. And then the uh, Sharada Peet, which is now in uh, Park, occupied Jammu Kashmir. And of course, the Shankara Mandir, Shankara Acharya Mandir in Srinagar, downtown Srinagar today. Uh, that was the place where Adi Shankara had done uh, his uh, penance. So this photograph, you can see Swami Jayendra Saraswati visiting that place. And of course, the top three photographs are of uh, Swami Jayendra Saraswati during his visit to Kashmir. One is, of course, uh, but, uh, sorry, uh, um, Amarnath. Then you have uh, Chira Bhavani or Kheer Bhavani. And the Shankaracharya. So, of course, he visited uh, Avantipura and he visited a few more places as well. But uh, just to get a perspective of uh, the connection between Shankara and Kashmir. 
let's look at the culture of Kashmir. You see, uh, Kashmiri Hindus, uh, they were, uh, uh, you know, great artisans. They produced a lot of fine fabrics, uh, pashmina wool, shawls and what have you. Uh, and they preserved a lot of Hindu texture uh, texts in, uh, you know, this Sharada Lipi. And you see the lady uh, at the bottom left. Uh, this is very typical of a Kashmiri lady. Uh, unlike the rest of the country, the ear piercing doesn't happen at the uh, bottom. It happens in the middle of the ear. So, and then they have long chains. That is typical of married Kashmiri ladies. And you see the havan that is going on. This is a parampara they have carried on for centuries. Um, unlike the rest of the country where Vigraha Radhana took predominant uh, position, Kashmiris even till date, in spite of having temples, mandirs, they still follow havan. Every year they will have annual havan in every temple and in their house also they do havan on specific uh, tithis. And of course, the great Sharada Lipi of uh, the age-old uh, uh, begone era, now that Lipi is gone and it has been replaced by uh, the Urdu script, that is the sad part. This is just to understand uh, the instrument of accession signed by Raja Hari Singh. See, the text is common for all the 525 states that merged with Bharat. There is no difference. Just a blanks were left with regard to the name of the state and with regard to the ruler and his signature and date. Save that, rest is all common. If you can see here, uh, he has written Sriman, Indu, Chandar, Raja, the Raj, all his titles he has put. Then you see at the end, uh, Maharaja, the Raj of Jammu, Kashmir, Ityadi, uh, and uh, Tibbat Desha. It is very clear written Tibbat Desha. He had suzerainty over many parts of Tibet also, which unfortunately Nehru gave up. So as this instrument suggests, he has surrendered all those rights to Bharat, but we have forgotten about it. You see, he signed it on the 26th of October. Whereas Lord Mountbatten, who was the Governor General of India, accepted this instrument on 27th of October. So this is just a perspective of, uh, uh, you know, uh, just to start off where contemporarily where we are going to get into. Um, other than Amarnath Ji, we have very little understanding of the temples of Kashmir, the mandirs of Kashmir, the Chetras of Kashmir. I have here put a Google Earth a snapshot, which covers the whole canvas of the valley right from uh, the southernmost part as you enter the valley to the northernmost uh, uh, tip till the line of control. The entire area is carpeted with uh, Kshetras of Hindus. Uh, you have all, you have Shaktam, you have uh, Vaishnavam and of course predominantly Shaivam. So now let's look at uh, temples of Srinagar. Even in Srinagar, uh, I mean this is again a snapshot of uh, where all the temples of Srinagar are located. Uh, even here, majority of the people would have visited Shankar Mandir. And a uh, uh, couple of weeks back, uh, uh, there was a presentation on uh, four or five temples of Kashmir in that Pandritan Mandir also spoken about. So Pandritan Mandir is believed to be a place which was uh, consecrated by the Pandavas. And uh, this was supposed to be 5000 years old. Of course, maybe the stones are all built much later, but it is in the Sthala Purana that Pandavas had uh, done uh, puja to Bhagawan here. See, what is typical of all Kashmiri mandirs, there will be a natural spring and the temple is in the middle. They put up wooden bridge to access that, go do puja and come back. But whereas the water, uh, natural spring accumulates in that pond and then it goes out into the fields which are uh, irrigated by uh, the people. So this, unfortunately or fortunately, today is in the most protected cantonment of Kashmir, which is Badami Bagh cantonment. They call it Pani Mandir. Uh, ordinary yatri, ordinary tourists cannot visit this place. One has to seek permission at the gate and then they will confiscate all your cameras, photographs. They'll do a thorough search, you know, a background check and then they'll let you in. Um, I'm not going to get into the etymology of this, the history of this, uh, you know, uh, in the in the earlier presentation, it was uh, explained in terms of how Ashoka's uh, Srinagara was centered around this particular place. I'm not going to get into all that. 
but i am going to talk about the present situation of this place you see the chinar tree to the right of it uh, just below that chinar tree is a, a canopy under which every single soldier who sacrifices his life in protecting kashmir is brought in there and uh, he is honored and uh, wreaths are laid and from there he is taken to his native village so it is uh, swami pandretan swami is witness to every single uh, you know uh, soldier who has sacrificed his life for protecting kashmir now in 2017 Uh, uh our prime minister honorable prime minister modi ji uh, inaugurated a war memorial uh, next to this pandritan mandir uh, there is an eternal flame and there is a garden and in the garden you can see in the photographs uh, there are black granite stones on which uh, every the name of every single soldier who uh, sacrificed his life since 1947 till date is returned etched in golden letters um, that itself is a uh, very inspiring and uh, very emotional moment for us you can see the army officer saluting and just behind him is the pandritan mandir uh, but what shook me to the core uh, which i get choked whenever i do a presentation including now i am actually getting choked is that there are three four blank uh, granite uh, uh, you know stones with no name mentioned in that what does it mean that is a powerful message which we are giving to say that we are willing to lose more of our boys and we have reserved place for them for the names to be returned but we are not going to lose kashmir that is a very very emotional moment for me so this is something sadly it is inside badami bag cantonment and uh, this is not open for public i wish the government throws it open for public and public gets inspired by this particular memorial uh, you know this speaks of volumes about the commitment of this country to retain kashmir so sorry for that i get a little emotional whenever i speak about this so now let's proceed uh as i said everybody is aware of uh, the shankara uh, temple on the shankara charya hill but uh, not many people are aware of the rest of the temples so now let's talk about uh, uh, another temple another mandir in uh, shrinagar which is in on the mountain called hari parvat next to akbar's fort this is mata chakreswari peet shakti peet that is a natural sila uh, which is open to the sky i mean it's not open to the sky but it is open in the front uh, which oversees the downtown shrinagar uh, where the maximum amount of curfew stone pelting happens but uh, this is the grace of mata uh, she is uh, you know there the kashmiri pandit legend says that it was mata chakreshwari uh, whose vehicle uh, wahana was a big eagle which carried two large stones and dropped it in that sati sar which i showed you in the first slide the impact of which drained that water via baramulla and that's how the land of kashmir was uh, established so she is the founding uh, uh, power force behind uh, emergence of the kashmir valley that is what uh, the legend says then uh, just below this particular hill uh, are two uh, mandirs one is amarkol mandir and another one is pokribal or pokrial mandir this pokrial mandir still has natural water there are different uh, uh, natural springs uh, for bathing of men separately and women separately one one could imagine the grandeur it would have been in its heydays when the entire area was filled with kashmiri pandits and hindus uh, this was one of the thriving place unfortunately today this is under the crp of control then uh, uh there is another mandir uh, uh in close to eedga uh, uh near to uh, what they call as tibetan colony this is a place called vicharnag mandir uh, vicharnag or vacharnag it's a pronunciation they do differently but vicharnag means this is a place where the lot of vichar used to happen there used to be debates discussions discourses a lot of concepts were discussed here many shaiva granthas were written here 
uh, their panchang used to be written here one of the holiest places for pandits uh, uh, was this particular temple in uh, uh, shrinagar but sadly this is full of water now it is water logged and it is abandoned uh, there is nobody there uh, even the ancient uh, chinar trees have been uh, cut down and the wood was used by local uh, muslims around uh, this is just in uh, dilapidated condition at least the government should now take initiative of cutting off the water source which is water logging this uh, you know uh, try to revive this mandir which had glorious history um uh, this of course is another one which probably uh, people uh, close to uh, shankar math of kanchi would probably know about it there is another mandir called jeshta devi mandir this is just behind raj bhavan where uh, in my last meeting with swami uh, swami ji he had told me uh, that uh, there was a yagna performed by the kanchi math here for the for about 4 5 days during uh, shankar jayanti period so this is a very safe and lovely place for all visitors to go uh, there are rooms there there is a kitchen you can cook your own food uh, you can stay as long as you can i have seen a few south indians going there and staying there uh, you don't have to worry about your accommodation uh, and there is natural spring natural water uh, you are in a very very secured place as as is common for uh, most of the kashmiri ancient temples you can see the natural spring here also and uh, the murti of mata in the center of course the old murti has been long destroyed and a new one has been put uh, to make this operational this is another uh, uh, important uh, mandir in downtown shrinagar in in uh, what do you say in one of the pri prime localities called dalgate this is almost next to the un uh, body on uh, india and pakistan next to that this mandir is there Uh, again it's a natural spring uh, which comes out and goes out to irrigate lot of lands uh, 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 as you can see the left hand corner i'm standing in front of the tree massive tree of four branches four uh, you know huge trunks you can imagine how ancient it would have been even now there are samadhis of many sadhus who came there and uh, you know used to do their uh, sadhana and they uh, you know went into samadhi their samadhis are still there this is a very very ancient place uh, this is uh, uh, in within this compound is the first and most popular hindu uh, what do you say vegetarian dhaba called krishna dhaba anybody going to shrinagar who is a vegetarian who wants assured quality vegetarian food would go to krishna dhaba of course after his popularity there are two or three other dhabas which came up on the same complex but krishna dhaba is the most famous sadly a few months back uh, the owner uh, the owner of krishna daba he had just gone out for lunch and his son was sitting at the cash counter and terrorists attacked and killed him so that's a very sad uh, reflection but then they are still serving all of us and uh, you know it will be nice if any of you go to shrinagar should meet uh, this gentleman and uh, express your support and feelings uh, in in solidarity uh, then you see the bridge on the top this is called amira kadal bridge this bridge uh, on one end of it is completely uh, militarized uh, sorry militant infested place where yasin malik's house is there so that uh, place uh, uh, you know uh, just next to that yasin malik's place on the banks of river jhelum jhelum is actually the ancient name is vitasa is a very wonderful mandir of hanuman ji a massive 6 foot hanuman mandir with panchamukhi shivling uh, on the banks of uh, vitasta nadi uh, of course under crp of protection uh, but then uh, this is a mandir worth visiting there is a masjid called uh, shah hamdan masjid in uh, downtown shrinagar uh, on the banks of uh, jhelum river uh on the wall behind this uh, masjid uh kashmiri pandits had applied this sindoor and put their om trishul and uh, swastika and all those symbols um uh, and you can see the steps uh, in front of that sindoor uh, uh, you know a uh, wall that those steps go into the river jhelum river this photographs i took uh, after uh, going into the masjid and climbing down the stairs from the masjid a few years back 
now they have sealed that uh, 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 you know exit uh, the, uh, the the gate has been completely barricaded so you cannot go and access this uh, the sad part of it is uh, this is lost to the memory of the uh, uh, next generations of Kashmiri pundits. But uh, whoever left Kashmir at that time, they did not want to lose connection to this particular place. So they had applied uh, this Sindur. The significance of it is this particular uh, place uh, was once upon a time Bhadrakali Mandir, which was occupied by uh, Shah Hamdan from Iran. And he converted into a kind of a Muslim prayer place. It is not his Mazar, but then it is a prayer place for Muslims. The strange part of it is uh, when you uh, uh, look into that, I was allowed to take photographs. There is still a Garbhagraha in the front. Uh, just behind that man, there is a Garbhagraha. But they turn to the right a little bit to the corner and pray, which is their east. That shows that building itself is not oriented as per Islamic rules. It was something which uh, was hurriedly done or very haphazardly done. Of course, the internal paintings are all uh, Kashmiri paintings uh, inspired from Iran. But uh, you, you can still see the Garbhagraha and Antarala very, very similar to a temple, a Kashmiri temple. It is still, uh, you know, you can see some of the remnants of it. Those who are interested in uh, uh, the tomb of Jesus, uh, that, that, that's also there in a place called Rosebull. Rosebull is extremely sensitive place. Uh, the people here are very militant and they don't allow you photography. Somehow I managed to take click these photographs. But for those that believe Jesus existed, I am um, skeptical. I am not too sure whether he existed. Probably he's a fictional character. But anyway, for those who believe that Jesus existed, there was this uh, book written by Russians which said that after crucifixion, he survived and he, he migrated to Kashmir. He practiced yoga and he died in Kashmir. So they claim this to be his tomb. In fact, uh, the Ahmadiyas uh, also agree to that narrative and they say this is the tomb of Jesus. Since uh, 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 they go against the Bible, uh, the Sunni Muslims don't treat them as uh, Muslims enough. And they are called kafirs. In Pakistan, the law itself prohibits them to call themselves as Muslims or uh, pray in any uh, masjids. So that is how it is. But then uh, this is a place in Kashmir, in Srinagar, where uh, you know people claim that this is the tomb of Jesus Christ. Now, let's uh, switch to um, uh, temples of South Kashmir. Uh, we have seen the temples of Srinagar. Now we will switch to temples of South Kashmir. Uh, again, a snapshot of, uh, you know, uh, all the temples, as you can see, from southernmost point till Avantiswamin Temple, Pahalgaon. Uh, Avantiswamin uh, Temple is very close to Srinagar uh, on the highway. So, again, it is carpeted with so many mandirs, so many temples. Of course, the most famous of them, uh, uh, you know, is uh, 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 Kirbhavani Mata Mandir, which is what... Uh, you know, uh, I was shown uh, two, three weeks back. Now, uh, when we go to the southernmost point, that means as soon as you cross into the Kashmir Valley from Jammu, uh, you cross the Jawahar Tunnel and enter into the valley, you get a town called Tazi Gund. Uh, instead of going on the highway, you just take a small turn, you get to this village called Verinag. Verinag is one of the holiest places for Kashmiri Pandits. Uh, because it is the origin of the river that flows in the valley, which is Vitasta River. Now, of course, it is called Jhelum River. And you can see how crystal clear the water is and how beautiful it is. So, uh, they used to come do their pindadan. They used to immerse the ashes of their uh, ancestors. And uh, they used to come for shrad. And of course, uh, they also had annual pushkar uh, like what we have. Uh, Pushkaralu, uh, you know, they also had... Uh, Kumbh Melas there. So it was a very rich Hindu traditions were here. Of course, once the Muslims occupied it, Jahangir built an octagonal uh, building around it uh, in an Islamic style. Um, however, uh, you know, ancient, ancient destroyed the murtis are still available here and there. They are put there. And now just outside this complex, there is a small mandir and a shivling is still ho housed there. Kashmiri Pandits do go there once in a while with, of course, 
uh, with uh, protection and uh, you know uh, some kind of a support uh, uh, but then uh, this is a holy place which uh, every one of us should visit uh, then of course i'm not going to get into pahalgam temples i'm, I'm sure most of you would have seen the pahalgam temples and of course amarnath uh, i don't need to elaborate upon it um, then uh, this again martha and surya mandir has been discussed in detail uh, uh, you know in that uh, presentation um, i will just uh, stick to one point here you can see this uh, uh, photograph here to the top left so many rooms were there because people who come there as yatris would have traveled thousands of kilometers uh, so they are not going to go away so soon they would have stayed there for months years together so this complex was so huge it could accommodate hundreds of people in its heydays and uh, some of the destroyed murtis are still so beautiful today you can see at the bottom photograph the murali uh, and then the yoga mudra and uh, so many are there uh, which are completely eroded uh, but then uh, sadly this was what was destroyed by sekandar butchkin and uh, you know you have seen uh, more details about this particular uh, mandir in the previous presentation so i will leave it there just below this mandir uh, this of course uh, martha and surya mandir is on a hill just when you get down the hill there is another mandir called martan surya mandir it is all same martan and martha and is all same interchangeable but then uh, this is a new mandir of surya mandir which is now uh, operational and the tank is again a natural spring uh, Uh, kashmiri pandit there are a few kashmiri pandits who are living here but of course in 90s their houses were all burnt and uh, slowly few people have come back and uh, uh, there is a gurudwara attached to this uh, the original idea was the gurudwara was supposed to be protecting the mandir uh, but then uh, uh, you know what's happening the sikh brothers are uh, being misguided and uh, taken away from the sanatana dharma from their original duty of protecting the sanatana dharma uh, but anyway uh, right now the mandir and uh, gurudwara both exist in the same complex so on the highway a lot of people would miss this um, when you are going from avanti swamin uh, avantipura towards anantnag there is another uh, uh, you know town called beech bihara Beach Bihara was a place where uh, terrorist attacked uh, the Amarnath pilgrims a few years back. Uh, I'm sure all of you would know that because uh, when um, uh, Mr. Azad retired from uh, Rajya Sabha, uh, Gulam Nabi Azad, uh, Prime Minister Modi had uh, spoken about his uh, support in uh, bringing back those pilgrims to Gujarat. So that attack happened close to this Beach Bihara town. Its original name is Vijay Bihara. uh of course the uh, it this town had many temples all of them were destroyed by sekandar butchkin uh, but then there is one temple which is still existing sitting on the banks of uh, vitasta river uh now let's see what is inside this mandir uh so uh, just outside the mandir there is a shivling and there is a beautifully sculpted uh, uh vishnu on garuda uh and the photograph to the left uh you know shows that this is under the caretakership of a local muslim and because pandits have handed over the key to him and gone so i went requested him and he brought me some water and uh, had the uh, you know blessings of uh, mahakal to do abhisheka there uh, but then that's the state of uh, affair of this temple which is bang on the highway on the national highway but if you see the shivling inside this is the shivling is outside i'm going to show you the shivling inside the mandir which i'm sure none of you would have seen such a shivling anywhere in the country it has 11 shivlings on a single pedestal and each shivling has two colors which is uh, you know uh, indicative of uh, shiva and parvati shiva and shakti and 11 of them of course now they put cement and they uh, uh, fixed it uh, permanently but it was believed that in uh, uh, great old days these were all left open and one could lift it with a single finger by chanting uh, uh, panchakshari five or six uh, sorry 11 times you chant panchakshari you could lift it that is their belief but anyway now they have put cement and blocked it but you will never find such unique shivling anywhere in the country 
11 shivlings on one pedestal uh, 11 of course is shiva's number and uh, all put on one uh, pedestal you can consider that to be 12 so it is like uh, uh, just an amazing uh, stunning picture when i saw when i went there it somehow misses every hindu it's just in you can see the kind of dust everywhere around except for the water which i poured uh, it's it's just gathering dust and nothing this is sad part of uh, the temples that have been abandoned everybody goes to shankara hill in uh, uh, shrinagar and martand temple and that's it uh, maybe a few would go to khir bhavani and all these mandirs are completely ignored it's time for us to re uh, reclaim all of them there is another place which is about a uh, few kilometers, five, six kilometers away from Bejbihada uh, called Tajiwada. This is called Chota Amarnath. Uh, you can see there is a cave there inside and in the cave there is shivling. Water keeps dripping onto the shivling all the year round. And in olden days, the Chadi Mubarak used to be carried from here to Amarnath. But now after militancy, the Chadi Mubarak is now being carried from Jammu to uh, Amarnath. Uh, via Pahalga. But this was the original route from uh, Chota Amarnath. They used to carry that. Kashmiri Pandits were completely self-reliant. They did not depend on Jammu uh, for their religious activities. They were completely self-sufficient. Of course, the trade was going on. People in, in mixing and all was there. But then for religious purposes, they don't needed, uh, they didn't need uh, Chadi Mubarak to come all the way from Jammu. They, they were perfectly self-sufficient. That is a sad part. This is now completely in ruins and uh, there are no visitors coming here, uh, completely abandoned. Maybe once in a while a Pandit uh, group will go there, uh, do some, uh, you know, Havan and then have a Bandara and then come back. Otherwise, this is abandoned. Of course, this Avanti Swamin Mandir was spoken about in that particular uh, webinar. I will not go into it. Uh, Kanchi Shankaracharya, Jayendra Saraswati ji had visited this place uh, during his visit to Kashmir. Then Anantanag. Again, Anantanag, a lot of people pass through Anantanag to go to Martand, but nobody actually can to go into this temple of Mar uh, Anantanag. Again, here there is a natural spring uh, of water. Anantanag, multiple Nags. Nag means in Kashmiri, a uh, natural spring. So multiple springs come into this particular tank and from here it goes out. Again, this uh, mandir has Gurudwara in its complex. Beach Bihara, which I showed you a while back, even that has a Gurudwara. The Sikh Gurus had established Gurudwaras in most of the ancient mandirs of Kashmir so that the Sikhs protect the Hindus. That was the intention of the Sikh Gurus. That is why we see all this... Uh, uh, Sikh Gurudwaras in all these places. So is the case with Anantana. Now, to the right, you see a Prachin Devi Bal Mandir. This is a small mandir where the Mata is there and the uh, entire area is flooded with water. You have to go knee-deep water to actually have Darshan of Mata. But then, behind that, you see an Islamic spire, green color spire, you see. That was the original Devi Bal Mandir, which they occupied and ultimately... Uh, the mandir uh, was shifted in a small shanty in the front and the entire area is occupied by uh, the residents, the Muslims residents are there. In the middle of it, this particular Devi Mandir is there and uh, that Mazar also is uh, Rishinath Mandir, they call it. They call him Rishi and they claim that he did penance on Allah and so they have kind of confiscated it. We really don't know, he probably was a great uh, Sanatani Rishi. But then uh, he has been uh, appropriated by the Muslims. And so this is the state there in Anantana. Everybody knows about uh, Khir Bhavani Mata Mandir uh, uh, or Shira Bhavani Mata Mandir, which was also presented in uh, on this platform two weeks back. But then people don't know that there are three Khir Bhavani Mata Mandirs in uh, Kashmir. This is one in the south, uh, which is uh, called... Uh, Mansgam. There's a place called Mansgam. There is no Murti here, but the natural spring itself is Mata. That's how they consider it. Uh, so uh, this is again one of the very important uh, mandirs. They they have a Parikrama, you know, Kashmiri Pandits go to all the three uh, uh, Kir Bhavani Matas uh, in a particular process. Uh, they say one is her uh, home, another one is there, one is her uh, 
you know nivasasthan another one is uh, you know her in laws place that's how they define it so there are three kheer bhawani mata mandirs and this is in the south called manzga then uh, there is another uh, mandir uh, which is in bala tripura sundari mandir uh, there is a natural formation of mata in the tree uh, in a place called devsar this unfortunately is uh, uh, victim of uh, terrorism and uh, even this mandir after i clicked this photographs there was an attack on this and they tried to burn this uh, you can see the photograph of mr vinod pandit at the bottom he and his team are trying to rebuild this temple you can see the brick uh, construction behind you once upon a time this was a very grand mandir unfortunately this is uh, you know uh, completely uh, ruined and now revival is being attempted this entire area around it is uh, uh, you know uh, not safe so kashmiri pandits even if they go they go unannounced and they leave before sunset that is how uh, you know the life there in this particular place is there is a place called pombe in kulgam district almost uh, outskirts of kulgam town there is a katyayani mata mandir uh, you can see the mandir photograph on the top left and then the mata murti in the bottom left of course that is a new murti because old murti is long destroyed now uh, you see the shila to the right uh, i'll just give you a story on this in 1992 uh, after the demolition of babri masjid the muslim uh, rioters brought in uh, a bulldozer and pushed this entire mandir into the nala which was flowing behind this they completely pushed it so after more than 12 13 years kashmiri pandits took the courage to go there Uh, look at the debris and pull out the original shila of mata was intact nothing happened to it of course the murti was destroyed but then the shila was intact saligram was intact so that they brought and reestablished it here and the uh, new mandir has been built here every year they do havan in this particular place uh, unfortunately just uh, less than 100 meters from this place uh, satish singh uh, one of the kashmiri hindus was target killed about a month back uh, that was in kulgam uh, but then uh, there is uh, there is a kashmiri uh, what do you say hindu who is a caretaker of this particular place he lives here with his family and uh, those who want to go can uh, keep in touch with the kashmiri pandit samaj they can guide you uh, inside the temple of course is safe and going and coming is also safe um, militants have never at least in the recent past have not targeted uh tourists and yatris they are only targeting people who are employed there or the forces but we we never know uh, how long uh, the peace would continue but let's hope uh, with the blessings of mata uh, we will be able to access all these things and then offer our prayers another yatra which is a very famous yatra in uh, kashmir uh, which uh, only a few kashmiris who know who are doing it but the rest of the country has completely ignored it is kausarnag yatra we all know about amarnath yatra but there are other yatras which are worthwhile exploring kausarnag yatra of course is undertaken with uh, all protocol security nothing to worry if you are in touch with some of the kashmiri pandits who are organizing this it is uh, uh, a yatra worth visiting it kausarnag is one of the holiest places of kashmiris in south kashmir so you can see the pristine beauty of that place the water the holiness of the water so that's something which i recommend everybody explore it then there is a place called kokarnag it was near kokarnag that uh, burhan wani was killed in kokarnag itself there is uh, kokarnag uh, gardens are there in the garden there is a natural spring which is still today called bhringi teerth you can imagine the history of bhringi bhringi and bhringi are pramada ganas of shiva which is there in uh, shiva puranas and all but the name is still carried down bhringi teerth and uh, locals believe that the water of this particular bhringi teerth uh, is medicinally so good that it will help you in your digestive system um, uh, so this is something which is now of course a public garden you can visit you can drink you can uh, relax here but uh, once this was uh, again uh, militant infested area a lot of destructions happened in and around kokarnag today it is relatively safer and uh, i 
recommend that all of you visit these places. So next to Kokarnag is a place called Sagam, where again there is sadly there is a completely destroyed, dilapidated uh, Shivalinga. You can see the fate of the Shivalinga, and uh, tears will come to our eyes. These are the fate of many mandirs in Kashmir. But then uh, it is for us to go visit them, try to revive. As more and more people go, more funds come in. We push the governments and authorities to rebuild these things. Um, that is how we Hindus reclaim our space back. And uh, other sad stories around Kokarnag, if you see, uh, there is Akingam Shiva Man Bhagavati Mandir. You see the whole mandir has been destroyed. A small uh, structure was built and uh, half destroyed the shila is only put there. Nobody there. The original uh, mandir is completely destroyed. And then uh, there is Sagam Devi Mandir. You see the platform is there, but the entire mandir has been removed, completely destroyed. Uh, these are all the mandirs which are in the pipeline for revival. Um, this land still belongs to the Kashmiri Pandits. Uh, if uh, the government is able to cooperate and we, rest of the Hindus from the rest of the country, are able to pitch in, probably we can revive all these mandirs. Now, friends, uh, this is very crucial mandir that I am showing you. This is a place called uh, Shopian. I'm sure you would have heard of Shopian. Almost every week, there is one encounter or other that happens in the district of Shopian. But in the town of Shopian and the outskirts, there is a very ancient temple called Kapala Mochan Mandir. You see the Shivling. It has knots on it, like Rudraksha. Again, a very, very unique Shivling. Uh, it has, uh, as if uh, Rudraksha are put there. They claim that Bhagawan Shiva was uh, infected by leprosy. And so he came here after taking bath in the spring here, he was cured of it. Um, and uh, you see the, uh, the pot on top of uh, the shivling. Uh, above the pot, uh, the room is left open to the sky. Especially when you come during winter season, snow keeps falling onto Mahakal on Kapalamochin. So it is a uh, one of the most divine, lovely experiences one can have. Uh, this is not protected by CRPF, police or anybody. It is left open. And then there is this couple, Razdan couple. Uh, their daughter came visiting them when I went there. But otherwise, this old couple are maintaining this particular temple. Uh, and it is the local Muslim villagers who supply them with milk, vegetables and everything. Uh, and that's how they are surviving. You see the other photograph where uh, Mr. Razdan is starting, st standing in front of the gate of the mandir. On the gate is written, Go India, go, in green. So, in spite of that, uh, the locals are supporting. And, uh, you know, this mandir is uh, a huge area. There are uh, many springs in this. Uh, Saptarishi Kund and so many Kunds are there. Um, and you see even the Ganesh is so naturally formed. Ganesh is there. Uh, this is one, one of the very, very ancient mandirs of Kashmir, uh, which is waiting for all of us to visit. Friends, now let us shift to uh, North Kashmir. Probably I'll take a few more uh, minutes. And then, uh, of course, North Kashmir is huge. Um, uh, so, uh, Ramesh ji, do you want me to continue with North Kashmir or we'll stop it here? Ramesh ji? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. No, I, I think we will continue uh, in our next session. Okay. okay. I want I, to I share a few, few things with you. A strange yeah, thing I... happened in your presentation today that nobody is able to write any comments. Okay. You know, so I'll stop I the could, sharing now. Uh, no, it, it, I could see that it's the whole thing is blocked and people are not able to write. There will be a lot of messages. We will have to investigate. The reason I'm saying that is people will be watching this show later on. Not many are watching it live, but people are going to watch later on. That's why I'm just saying this. For some reason, you know the type of messages they are coming. Somebody is posting these messages, blocking 
so that nobody can write any comments i think i was only thinking about that uh, memorial you talked about where there is a blank slab <laughs> i was just thinking only about that so this is not going to stop all this so it is a very, very thing it is a very very emotional thing for me uh, i i would have done uh, i don't know maybe 30 40 presentations till now and every presentation i choke because uh, that's the kind of a commitment uh, uh, you know we showed uh, to uh, no i think people must have been watching all your presentations and uh, sending the powerful message it is not just to pilgrimage or tourism or history and you talked about i lost you yeah i'm i'm here i'm here please oh okay we people are you are talking about uh, what rest of india can do which is very very important not just listening to these lectures we must start making that uh, pilgrimage not just tourism so that we are offering our support and reclaiming that's the title what you are given so it is very fascinating and very powerful message and although you mentioned that the spirit came after watching that chanakya i don't think it is just chanakya that mattered to you that spirit i'm sure it's that's quite alive with rest of us in india only thing is that people are not able to demonstrate that i think people like you making this kind of presentation who would like to continue that uh, uh, travel to kashmir do the pilgrimage and those of us watching today you, you mentioned about jeshtha mata temple yeah, as you mentioned facilities are available in jeshtha mata and we have actually one presentation made by sri bharat bhushan bhat he has given his contact numbers he has given all the details where you can stay how he will arrange picking you up from the airport you can stay for a week it's sort of a package available so please go back and check it must have about two or three months ago, uh, Bharat Bhushan, I'm sure you would have met him also, Bharat Bhushan, but we are taking care of the, the temple and the, uh, places where one can stay. It's very well organized, like you mentioned about kitchen and all. So I think rest of us who are listening to all this should start undertaking this kind of pilgrimage to go and visit these places. I think that is what the take home point from your uh, presentation today. Are you are you able to hear? <laughs> Can you hear? I think today is it's quite uh, strange. Um, uh, yeah, only now I'm able to see some uh, messages coming. Can you hear, uh, Giridhar Ji? I think it's it's cam. Uh, is frozen, not able to. Yeah, uh, I think there is some problem with him too, or there is some hacking going on. I don't know. <laughs> Today has been very strange, and we don't see any comments by anybody. Uh, it is taken over by uh, the spam, which is sending all these uh, messages across. So, anyhow. Uh, Giridhar Ji is going to reappear in our uh, show um, next week and we will continue talking about um, other temples of Kashmir. I think this coverage has been pretty good. So we will close our program uh, today and uh, as always we want to thank uh, Kanchi Mutt, Kanchi Mutt channels, uh, Kamakoti.tv um, and uh, VDSP for all the streaming support. As always, as I keep saying, India's leading only Tamil newspaper, Dinamalar, is giving a great coverage of our program. So, in case you don't know where to look for this inf information, those of us in uh, South reading Tamil newspaper, please go through uh, Dinamalar most likely on a Thursday. We should be able to know about our programs. Uh, let me see if he's there. Yes, sir. Can you hear me?
Can you hear me? No, I can't hear you, sir. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Unable to hear you. 